Good morning. We'd, we'd like to welcome everyone to the service today and thank you for joining us on this beautiful morning. And it's Father's Day, so we'd like to wish all the fathers here and in spirit a happy Father's Day. My name is Rena, and I'm really pleased to be here today. But before we start the service, can I ask you all to turn off the pesky mobile phones? We're good? Yes? Great. Let us open in prayer. To live in harmony. Eternal Spirit, Father, Mother, God, I seek thy presence. I close the door of my outer senses to enter into thy temple. The temple of my heart, and in the stillness of the Spirit, I worship thee, Creator Lord. I aspire in thankfulness, praying for understanding of life's experience and of the laws of spiritual universe. My mind is open to truth. My heart is full of love towards every creature. May thy spirit lead me to the centre of harmony, to the life of harmony, which is perfect health and holiness. Amen. Our reading today is Open Your Heart to the Sun from White Eagle's book, Festivals and Celebrations. And to begin, in the past, ceremonies were held at this time of the year when the sun was returning with its warmth and life force to bring forth from the earth itself the manifestation of God's life and beauty. We would raise your consciousness beyond the darkness of the earth life and bring you a vision of the company of radiant spirits and angels who draw near to the earth at this time in obedience to the law of the will and the will of our Father, Mother, God. They come among you with rejoicing, trying to infuse into your being the joy of the sunlight and the joy of Christ's life. They try to awaken in your soul the higher consciousness, supreme confidence in God's love and wisdom. You may, if you will, receive the baptism of this sun spirit, even as the brethren of the ancient wisdom have always received it. Turn your back, beloved brethren, on the darkness and the era of mortal thinking. On the lower mental plane, there is confusion, and the one who dwells in the prison house of this flesh dwells in confusion. But the spirit within aspires and reaches forth to its father, mother, God, and cries out in joy that it lives and has its true being in heaven. In this modern age, you have lost touch with the truth of being in God's light, beauty and good. Brotherhood is hardly known. But at this time of the festival of the horizon sun, let us make a supreme effort to open our hearts to God, the great sun of all life, and reflect its light into the hearts of all people. So may we become brothers and sisters to all life, simple, gentle and true so that if God wills, he, she may use any of us to comfort, inspire and heal our companions. The ancient festival of welcome in the sun at this season of the year will be revived when people realise the true art of life. The Son of God, by which we mean the life force which flows from the heart of God, which is love, will enter into fullness and richness into your being in the same way as the sun enters into the seed quickened to life by Mother Earth, as nature is quickened by the same force of love, so you will be quickened and grow into perfection. There will be in those days not stricken men and women, but all will be as perfect sons and daughters of God. We believe in the coming of brotherhood of Christ on earth. We will work to this end. Thank you. And now, our world healing prayer. We remember the great need of our world. And we seek to still our mind. So we come into a place of peace 
and stillness. Drawing closer to God in prayer. Let us open our hearts to the power, love and wisdom of God. By the Christ's light and love in our hearts, we call to the great angels of the Christ star circle. Being still, we feel their presence and their power. And now, with all the will of our minds, with all the love of our deepest heart, we send forth the light We send it forth as a great star of light, a blazing star. A star of the Christ light. Lifting all hearts into the internal heart of God. By the power of the Christ within our hearts, we send forth the light to the world. And particularly today, we hold Afghanistan in the light of the star. We hold the people, the animals, and the very land itself in the light. We hold our beautiful planet in the healing light of the Christ star. We hold within the healing ray the soil. The waters of the earth and the air. And all nature. Especially our animal brethren. We hold in the heart of the Christ star the soul of Australia. The soul of the people of Australia. May the light of the Christ star shine through the hearts and minds of the people of Australia to bring healing to mankind and reverence for all life. We hold in the heart of the Christ star the soul of New Zealand.
the soul of the people of New Zealand. Let us hold within the great healing star anyone known to us personally who is in need of help or healing. Silently, we name them now. and see them radiant in the healing light. And particularly today, we hold the soul of Ethel Hind. Casey Sidebottom. Noel Stewart, Preet Bain, Jophael, beloved cat of Van and Gafaja, Scampy, beloved cat of Beth Measures, and see them radiant in the healing light of the star. Amen. Please join me in saying the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen.
and those that are in spirit that are very, very close at the moment. Now, until two o'clock this morning, I was going to talk about cycles and the sun men and the light. At two o'clock this morning, I've changed. So, to take back to the bird sound that we were hearing before, it just brings the most beautiful joy and happiness and peace, doesn't it? Well, this morning after sitting on the computer for four hours, I opened the window, opened the curtains, had the window open just a little bit to let a little bit of breeze through, and that sun came, and it's come up over the ocean and through the trees, and then those real crimson reds, and then the oranges, a little bit of gold, and then the gentler pink, and then that brilliant bright white. And as it came up further, 90 degrees or so up into the, into the sun, um, sunrise, it just illumined and it was alive. It was a life force that was alive. And spring is alive. It's when everything becomes alive. The flowers come out and the bulbs that have been hiding come through and they poke their little noses through and then their hearts open and they shine forth. And that's what we're being asked to do at this time. And it reminded me of the balance of nature and the harmony of nature, how it works in perfect harmony. Because not only was the sun changing through the coloured rays, offering a gift on vibration of colour, the birds, each one took their own little step and sang in their own little time as if the first guard went off and it was... Well, it wasn't that, but it was... <laughs> and then the next one. And as if to say that there was one sound note that was going to wake up one particular person in their home because that was the time they needed to wake up. And each sound that they sung also woke up another person part of the animal life and, and sang through the new song from the co next colour. And they all just worked in absolute harmony and balance and purity. And it got me thinking as well, are we at this time in evolution working in harmony? Are we walking balanced, in love, with an open heart flowing with all that is taking place, with all the changes, knowing there is always a divine plan? Or are we fighting within ourselves and struggling? Either way, it just is. However, we are here to step from one age to another. And at these times, there is always a pivotal time where the balance of love and fear is so strong. However, we are here at this time to sound the note of love more than anything because it is needed now more than anything. And we know Whitey has always told us that love conquers all. So fear builds separation. It distorts our thoughts. It distorts our mind. It distorts our feelings. It grows and latches on to whatever it can to continue to grow. We become ungrounded, uncertain of our path, and we find ourselves saying things that we generally wouldn't say. And I noticed this the other week, a couple of weeks ago, and I've been really good at trying to stay balanced and send forth the light, but a couple of weeks ago I was walking down the hill to the markets, to the store that I have, with a girlfriend who is also there. And she was talking about, and she's a single mother and a beautiful, beautiful woman, and she was worried about what was happening in the world and financially. And I got down to the bottom of the, 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 the hill and I was thinking, just holding space for her to say whatever she needed to say. And 
all the while just knowing that everything will be okay, everything is okay, it was always okay. And when I got to the bottom, one of the gentlemen that helped set up and put up the tents for us came. And I found myself blurting and bubbling her words. And as I was saying them, I'm standing there thinking, well, that's not my truth. And I'm going, I don't think that. But I was saying it. So, over this period, over the next few weeks, consciously listen and feel what you are saying or what you are thinking and what is habitually going around in our thoughts. Are they our words? Are they our truths? Are they our husbands? Are they our wives, our families, the neighbours? Come back to self so that we spring and blossom and bloom the purest, most wonderful love and light. So all humanity, so each one of us steps more fully into the Aquarian age and passes this initiation that we are living at this time. So if you think about it, the Piscean Age, where the, two, the symbol and the glyph of the Pisces is the two fishes, and they're swimming in two different directions. The Age of Aquarius is the water pot, the water bearer, balancing the emotions, We were born through division, having a male and a female aspect. And our goal in life is to be whole, balanced of the male, the female, and the, the son, the Christ within. These two principles manifest love and fear the di and the division of that base. Fear pulls away consciousness. This also means that fear is a manifestation pathway and it always divines. Love creates and it grows and it goes within. The very creation of fear is the division of love. Before there was fear, all there was was love and unity, oneness. And in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was God. God is love. And White Eagle says, Within the silence, the first sound is heard. And from that sound is born light. This is the beginning of creation. So you will see the importance of silence in which sound proceedeth. The division of love is easy to hold here in the mind, but impossible to hold here in the heart, as the heart only knows unity. As divided love continues to divide and is prone to continue to pull apart whatever or wherever it is made home, Fear has an infinite faces and identities. It will continue to multiply, lack, scarcity, sadness, grief, anger. The more we worry about something, the more we divide ourselves. So how can we bring ourselves back to love? Well, our breath, of course. Coming under the star, breathing in that light, opening our hearts, sending forth the light being of service to everyone we come in contact with. 
judging no one, flowing with all that is taking place, saying, I choose to feel this. I choose this. I don't know what to do. Show me the way. So if you think in this way about breath, every inhalation and exhalation is an opposite an opportunity to experience love and how loved we are because it is the gift and joy of another breath of another moment of this experience right here right now just sit and breathe your in-breath, experiencing the peace and the love of being alive right here and now. And of course, the out-breath. Allow each inhalation and exhalation to be a conscious awareness that you are love, that you are peace, that you are alive. And it's a gift taken from so many. And in the stillness and in that breath, of stillness, we feel and find nothingness. And modern science is proving that everything comes from nothing and goes back to nothing. The basis of existence and fundamental quality of the cosmos is vast nothingness. The galaxies are just small happenings, a sprinkling the rest is just a vast empty space and in which we've heard the Hindus call Shiva. The darkness, the void, the feminine. That is the womb from which everything is born and that is the oblivion into which everything is drawn back, sucked back. A yogi is someone who has experienced existence as him or herself. Existence, everything that is taking place, all that is. If we are to contain the existence of creation within, even for a moment, we need to experience the nothingness, the emptiness, the stillness, the sound. Now, only nothingness can hold everything. Now, that sounds weird, I know. But something can never, ever hold everything. A vessel cannot hold an ocean. Yet our planet can hold an ocean. But it can't hold the solar system. But it can hold the rest of the galaxy. So you see, something can never hold anything. There's always a limitation. It is in, only in the nothingness that we can hold everything. So again, this morning, after reading that and feeling into that, as I was writing, this is a little exercise that felt pertinent for now. So to keep that balance, to find that balance, to live in love, to trust the process of life and trust what's going on within us, to trust how we are feeling, to acknowledge that all is well, the good, the bad and everything that is in us that we feel that we're experiencing. We need to ensure that we bring ourselves very strongly into ourselves, to be grounded into our physical body to touch the earth, to open to the sun, to breathe in the light. So 
So for now, just call yourself back, feeling all of you strongly, whole, and at peace. And just feel into the bones, your head, your skull. Now there's no need to do anything with your mind. It's a feeling and intuition exercise that's just allowed to just be. So feeling the skull, the shoulders, the spine. Feeling the gentleness of the breastplate, the ribs, your hips, as if you're going in but not, but just experiencing them ever so gently. Feeling the bony structure in the legs and the feet. And then inside the skull. And your intuition knows where to go. The corpus callosum. The pineal. The pituitary. Thalamus. Breathe and feel into the pit of your throat. Just experiencing. Feel your lungs. Your heart. The ventricles of your heart the arteries and blood are going deeper into your heart, into the space of nothingness within. Now again, bring attention to your left hip, feeling the nothingness of the left hip and the right hip. And just allowing yourself to feel the spaciousness within your body, the stars, the galaxies, the solar system, all life. Freedom to feel your peace, your love, your joy. And seeing the light within your heart radiant, illumined like the sun. And sending forth the light within. And breathing more deeply. And White Eagle says in The Light Bringer, Remember this, you'll find your master first in the secret chamber of your own heart. When you have found him or her there, you will know the voice of your master. And he or she shall reveal the way. You should treat your brother and your sister on earth how you should act in certain circumstances in your life. Your master says to you, cast out fear, be unafraid, be whole, know no desire. If you can always act as if your master is by your side, 
and you do what you feel would be your master's way. Then you are nearing the meeting place and will meet him or her face to face on earth. And to end on White Eagle's words, when you are truly ready to look into the mirror of your soul, you will see just how agreeable or the reverse has been your past. And it takes a strong, wise soul to be able to face the truth. The difficult part is for a soul to live day by day, absorbing the lessons which the outer life is intended to teach. Above all, we ask you to cast out fear. If you persevere with this one small lesson for even just a few weeks, at the end of that time, you'll realize what a great step forward you have taken. Be without fear. Surrender to God. Be filled with love and light. And you will help the world to move forward to peace. There are no shortcuts to the promised land. And shall we do a very short meditation? So together, walking up a beautiful mountain path, you feel the strength of the earth beneath your feet, the sun upon your shoulders, and with each step, you feel the joy of living. With each breath, you feel the peace and the happiness of life. And as you rise, you feel a life force that is within you, that is stronger than anything you have ever experienced before, because you know you are one with all life. And as you reach the mountain peak, the sun is radiant and pours down upon you. Breathe in the golden light. Down through your head and through your skull, through your body. Surrender to the love of the Christ light. And you feel yourself rising into the temple of healing. And as you reach the gates, the doors, they open. And there is a crystalline throne a healing bed that you lay upon. And the pure light of love pours through. And the master healer enters the temple. And the light is brighter than before. And a gentleness is felt within.
just his very essence casts out all that no longer serves. And a renewed commitment to life and the joy of life resides. You're guided to your feet and gently escorted out the temple. And you slide back down that beautiful ray of light to you again standing on the mountain peak. And that peace Stillness, acceptance, and love resounds within. And as you walk back down the mountain path, you see the wildflowers dancing, all the colors singing their song, the birds singing in the trees, the sun shining upon your shoulders, and with each step coming deeper and deeper and deeper into your body. Joy, love, peace, happiness, Freedom to see the good in all and everything. And very strongly breathing more deeply, feeling your feet. Feeling into your knees, your base, your heart your head, heart wide opened, mind silenced, ready to be free.
Mahana, we bow in humble adoration. Through lines of service, we would worship you, shining in our hearts the light of all creation, which word and art through all eternity. <laughs> <laughs>